I'm Carrie, and I'm with the City of Austin Art and Public Places program, and I'm here today to talk to you about Hello Lamppost. Every day, we walk in the footsteps of hundreds of others, sharing the space but remaining disconnected from one another. Imagine if we could connect over these shared experiences in a simple and approachable way, eliminating the coldness of our urban surroundings and injecting a bit of joy into our daily routine. The answer may lie with the unassuming objects that share our public spaces. When was the last time you noticed a fire hydrant or a utility pole? Have you ever thought about what the world looks like from their point of view? With Hello Lampos, it provides a platform to share memories, observations, and opinions through these objects using their unique pre-existing reference codes. Players can interact with any object they choose in any part of the city. Once you've identified an object, send a text message to a local number assigned to Hello Lamppost. When you get a reply, keep talking. Answer the object's questions and hear what others have said to it. With Hello Lamppost, these codes become secret passwords that allow you to wake up a sleeping object and hear what it has to say. The more you play, the more the hidden life of the city is revealed to you. The automated replies are based on the type of object and the location, even the time of day and the weather. Different objects will ask you different things, and it will share with you stories that others have said to it. Hello Lampos has launched in Bristol, Austin, and Tokyo. In each city, it was key to engage with local partners to establish content that reflected the authentic nature of that particular city. Through playtesting, the designers were able to engage this local feedback and incorporate it into the system, and, make sure, and they also made sure that the logic never felt wrong. My organization, Art in Public Places, was one of those partners that brought Hello Lampos to Austin. We were looking to commission a special project for our 30th anniversary, and this was our first completely digital public art project. With local partner nonprofit Art Alliance Austin, we engaged numerous stakeholders and held focus groups to develop content that reflected Austin's authentic character. Promotional signage and a public launch event raised the visibility of the project by giving it a physical presence in the city. This ranged from large banners to smaller interventions like stickers, posters, and t-shirts. What I love about Hello Lampos is that it challenges you to be creative and a little bit adventurous. It challenges you to look at your city in a new way and the shared memories offer new perspectives on the familiar. And I also love the humor and the emotional resonance, resonance that can be placed into a single text message. As you can see, people will talk to anything. <laughs> in Austin, trees were among the most popular objects second only to lampposts. This provided us an opportunity to not only raise awareness about the severe drought that's affecting Texas, but it also provided players an opportunity to share stories about their favorite trees. And now for a special message from Ben Barker and Sam Hill of Pan Studio, the designers of Hello Lamppost. Here's Ben. Hi, South by Southwest Eco. Uh, ben here from Pan Studio. Uh, sorry we couldn't be with you today, but uh, I'm sure Carrie's doing a great job presenting. We just want to say a massive thank you for selecting us as finalists. And I just want to say a little bit about um, where Hello Lamppost has gone since we were uh, finished in Austin. We went straight to Tokyo and had a great time there. And since then, we've also been commissioned in Singapore and in Bordeaux. Singapore is actually launching pretty much as we speak. So we just want to say a massive thank you for hosting us, for having us in Austin, um, for having us at South by last year, and for all the su success that you've sort of led on to us having. So I'll pass you back over to Carrie, and thanks again. Thank you. Great, thank you. <laughs> Daniel, you look like you have I'm something ready. to say. I'm ready. <laughs> um, I'm wondering about the conversation that's generated. I mean, technically, these are sort of geolocate, geolocatable um, stickies, but uh, the most important part is what uh, metaphoric kind of messages they are in a lamppost and a tree. Mm -hmm. uh, you say these are the number two and number one. Um, so I wonder, the conversation, is it about lampposts and trees, or are people talk about sort of environmental cha challenges when they're talking about the tree, and they actually talk about illumination and uh, yeah. fixing those infrastructures when they talk to lampposts. So what is it they talk about? 
It's really both. Um, some people were just interested in the fact that they were talking to a fire hydrant and wanted to hear what it had to say. We uh, established the questions that were related to each specific object, so they asked different questions. Um, but by playing and becoming a little bit more comfortable and familiar with how it works, a lot of people start to, started to share their own memories and their own stories that they had at that particular tree or at that particular street corner where that lamppost was shining on them. And so it really became both sides of the story. Uh, kind of a follow-up question to that, and the question is how far can these conversations, how deep can they go? Because right now it's, it seems to be a one-to-one -one, mm -hmm. um, relationship, but it sounds like some of the conversations are carried through to the next user. Right. And then also how are these uh, through like analytics, or how are the, how's the data analyzed? So if there's an accumulation of a certain type of data, is that data used for something or somehow accessible mm -hmm. to the public? Yeah, so the more somebody talks to an object, the more they have to share. So there, there's always going to be a set of initial questions. The conversation lasts for three messages, three questions, three responses. Um, and then, as I said, as more people talk to it, the, the lamppost or the object that you're talking to has the opportunity to share more stories with that. Um, we were able to sort of aggregate um, what people were saying and kind of see what was most popular. Um, we were also able, in the course of the project, to adjust some of the questions to reflect some of the feedback that we were getting to either um, get different feedback or to kind of craft the question that was really, um, we get at what people were wanting, or interested in saying. I would wonder, I mean, you could see this project becoming delightfully polemical very quickly. I mean, if the lamppost asked why that person hadn't written to the state legislature to ask for more <laughs> infrastructure funding. I mean, but is it yeah. all, do you have to stay away from things like that? Because I guess the next question or related to that is what does it all add up to? Mm -hmm. From the de designer's perspective, they really wanted this to remain fun and playful and engaging and really start to get get people connecting to each other that are sharing these spaces. So we tried to stay away from some of those really poignant questions um, in general. However, um, we were able to in inject some historical information, especially as it related to trees. Not every city has their trees numbers and tag, but we do because we have drought issues, but we also value our trees. And so we were able to interject some educational historical information. Um, but in general, we, we remained uh, away from some of the more uh, political issues. Keep it fun. Quick question. How is this project funded? Is it funded by tax dollars? Um, the project that we did in Austin was funded through hotel occupancy tax funds, and our division, the Cultural Arts Division, receives a small portion of those funds for cultural programming. So we were able to use those funds to bring this project to Austin. What's the most unexpected conversation that's <laughs> bubbled up through this? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I personally was really impressed with the level of humor that we found in conversations. Um, some of the more interesting things were about uh, uh, maybe deviant things that people were doing and confessing to these objects that they felt like they couldn't confess wow, to Wow, and I'm else. so excited to actually be able to cut it off at that point. <laughs> so that you're all going to be wondering what deviant things had been done in Austin with lampposts and fire hydrants and things like that. So one more round of applause. Thank, Thank you. you.